Hello to the pessimistic, optimistic, and everyone in between. My name is Connor Phillippe, and welcome back to the Minnesotan Sports Podcast. And the, the lighting is really a good mood for how that game went. It was probably the worst Minnesota Vikings win I have ever seen in my entire life. The Vikings win 3-0 to the Raiders, a game that saw Justin Jefferson get hurt, a game that saw Brandon Powell limp off to the sideline, a game that saw Brian O'Neill get hurt as well, and I'm pretty sure one of our like fourth string wide receivers also got hurt during the game. I was watching it, but I didn't listen to it, so there were some things I missed, but there is no excuse for how poorly that game went, and I have absolutely no clue how we could have possibly won. We are somehow 7-6. and six. I honestly would have, in some ways, I'm not saying necessarily because it does give us still a chance to make the playoffs, but if it weren't for that chance to make the playoffs, I really would have wished we'd just lose this game and just get it over with. Because, once again, we win a game that we should have lost, and our record gets boosted, and it makes people think that what's going wrong is not going quite as wrong as it is. And people are also going to say that losing Kirk Cousins and losing Justin Jefferson for a lot of the year and all that stuff are going to be you know, reasons and excuses. And yes, a lot of things went wrong in this game. But at the end of the day, Josh Dobbs was atrocious. But not just was Josh Dobbs atrocious. How do you watch Josh Dobbs perform the way he did? And yes, there are plenty of other factors. The wide receivers could not catch a pass. TJ Hawkinson, how are you still missing those catches when you are re you just reset the tight end market? You can't miss catches. Even the contested ones, you got to come down with. You're supposed to be one of the best tight ends in the league. Um, KJ Osborne also missed some catches today. Um, and then, but, but let's just put that aside for the second. Josh Dobbs was atrocious. He was a horrible decision maker. It's, it's a miracle he didn't throw many interceptions today. Even with all that, you see that. And you don't bench Josh Dobbs until well into the fourth quarter. What, what, are you, what is Kevin O'Connell doing where you see your starting QB? I mean, I, I, can't, I don't even know how many first downs they converted in that amount of time. They didn't get close to the field goal. Any third down, they would just throw the ball away or get or Josh Dobbs would get sacked. His scrambling ability means nothing anymore because th that th those two games before he was figured out by the defenses are gone. Everyone knows what he's going to do. Even the only person that doesn't know what he's going to do is him. And so you see that atrocious performance. The Vikings have not scored a point going into the fourth quarter and you wait until like 12 or 10 minutes left in the game to finally take him out and put in Mullins. It's just, I don't care what the score is. If your quarterback is playing that poorly, get him out of there. He doesn't have the track record to warrant keeping him in for that amount of time. And then, I mean, all that stuff happened. You know, of course, that Greg Joseph missed field goal, all of that stuff. And what's so frustrating about it is, A, because we won the game, people aren't going to nearly take enough steps to address all the things that went wrong in this game. And on top of that, what is most infuriating is just imagine last year's team with this year's defense. If Brian Flores had been with the team last year, we could have easily won the Super Bowl. And, and yet, it's just it's the way things always work with Minnesota sports where last year we had a great offense, we had the clutch factor, we were finding ways to win games. And now this year, our defense is one of the most successful defenses in the league. We're stymieing all these offenses. Yes, we haven't played good offenses, but it doesn't matter how good the offense is when you let less than 10 points go by. That means you're a good, a good defense. And of course, when we have this kind of a defense, Kirk Cousins gets hurt and then Kevin O'Connell can't figure out how to call plays. Our backups all suck, and we're st we're still going to just be in this mediocre state where even if we win, make the playoffs, we're going to get absolutely dem demolished. And it's just no. As a Vikings fan, I know what's going to happen. Next year's going to roll around. Either Kirk's going to come back, or something else is going to happen. Our offense is going to be so much better. We're going to have the ability to win games again as an offense, 
and then Brian Flores will probably leave for a head coaching job, will get stuck with another bad defense, and the cycle will just continue. The offensive line will continue to be bad, and it's just like, it feels like nothing is ever going to change. So a lot of negative comments surrounding a loss, I know, but everyone else felt it. This is the kind of game where, honestly, they deserve to lose, and they deserve so much to lose that even like diehard fans like me were almost hoping they'd lose so that they could learn a lesson from it. And it's just, it's so frustrating the way that the season has gone down, both in the ways that we've been screwed over and the ways that we've been beating ourselves. Because you can't blame this on just having a backup QB. You can't blame this on just some of the injuries we've sustained over the last few weeks. It's just, there's, it's unacceptable. And the fact that we're seven and six right now is a miracle. And if we play like this against the Bengals, with Jake Browning playing the way he is, we are going to lose by 24. So that's all I got for you. But thanks so much for watching this one. Please let me know in the comments what you think about this win by the Vikings. Um, Vikings currently still in the sixth seed for the playoffs, but don't deserve to be there. But thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the flip side.